Welcome, everybody. Thank you for coming down to the Sherry Honkala for Sheriff uh, Headquarters in Philadelphia. Um, I am, my name is Karen Hunt. I'm the president of Philadelphia Now. Sherry Honkala's story is full of obstacles that many families and, and women are facing in Philadelphia right now. Hunger, poverty, and most daunting of all, homelessness. Uh, she, uh, most of the women who are, or most of the families that are facing foreclosure are caught between mortgage fraud and a failing economy and they played by the rules, they paid their bills, and still they're facing losing everything. Um, as a country, we gave Wall Street a pass and we gave Main Street the shaft. Um, Sherry Honkala puts a face to these people and she has decided through her own experience to put their humanity front and center and to make it the centerpiece basically of her campaign. Sherry Honkla truly believes in government of the people, by the people, for the people. This is, some people might say, naive. I say, in this day and age, it's brave. So Philadelphia now is very, 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 very honored and thrilled uh, to endorse Sherry Honkla for sheriff. Um, and very happy. We think she'll make a great show. <laughs> and now I'd like to, uh, to turn the podium over to George Friday. She is the chair of the Women's Caucus for the Green Party and a longtime uh, colleague of Sherry Hunkla. Good evening. I'm so happy to be here. Great to see you all, and so proud to be able to talk about Sherry as sheriff. And not just a sheriff, but a real model to the whole country. Um, I am the chair of the Women's Caucus for the Green Party, the National Green Party, and we look to and support women candidates because we know from our experience that when you want to think of problem solvers, when you want to think of peacemakers, good gracious, if you want to think about who puts the food on the table on a regular basis, we're talking about women. And because of a number of realities in this country, not the least of it which being a country that will let Wall Street get a pass and make Main Street get the shaft, there's something about that reality that makes it very difficult for women to run for candidacy, to maintain their campaigns as true, authentic people. Uh, often what happens in campaigns is for many reasons, women are scrutinized at a level that is, does not happen with men. Their ability to raise money does not match what happens with men. And the injustices and lack of balance can wind up being a situation where people don't even want to run. But there's something that Sherry and I have in common that I think is one of the reasons she runs anyway. And that's because we both know something about poverty. And one of my um, many hats in the world is, is to do training, anti-oppression training and community building training. And one thing I know from my experience as a trainer is that those of us who grew in poverty and people who grew up with economic stability didn't learn the same skill set. Now if you talk to people who grew up in poverty and there's some chaos going on, like the lights about to go off at five o'clock unless we pay the bill today. These folks know something about problem solving. Now I may have learned from my colleagues and friends who grew up with economic stability what status quo feels like, right? <laughs> what does healthy feel like? Because sometimes in lives like those of us who do live in poverty, we're so comfortable with chaos, we're so adept at problem solving that we sometimes create some just so we got something to do. <laughs> So I'm glad that what Sherry has created with her imagination, which you can get if you have to deal with chaos in your life, with her faith that you must have to be able to bring joy every day if you're dealing with, how am I going to get the kids food today? How am I going to get some shoes? The bottoms of these are coming off, okay? And the courage that it takes to deal with the reality of a life that wants to disregard you and discount your humanity and your brilliance and your worth 
simply because of what is or isn't in your bank account. I am so glad that Sherry is using that imagination, that faith, and that courage to stand up for people, to model that to our country, run for office, run for sheriff, keep people in their homes, create a movement to say we will not allow this anymore. And I am just thrilled to know you. So with that, we'll hear from Sheriff. Sherry, the sheriff. Oh, no, sorry. No, no, Terry, I'm sorry. I got so excited. So no, we get now to hear from the national now president. Terry, yes. Thank you. Sure. Thanks, George, and thanks for your inspiring words about Sherry. I am just thrilled that the Philadelphia chapter of NOW has enthusiastically endorsed Sherry Hagala for sheriff. I can't imagine a better person to be sheriff in Philadelphia at this time, um, and, and I am truly, truly honored and humbled to stand here to say that the National Organization for Women stands in solidarity with Sherry's purpose and with her vision. Right. We need in Philadelphia, and in fact we need in communities all over this country, sheriffs who will not twist the law to suit the bankers who can't find the note. The bankers who, are, who resort to robo-signing fraudulent documents so that they can put people out of their homes, who then explain their behavior by saying, well, but that homeowner knows they owe the money. Excuse me? You walk into a court of law and you literally say, no, sir, I don't have the documentation to support my foreclosure on this mortgage, but I want the, for the mortgage foreclosed on anyway because this person knows they owe the money? This is the United States of America. We have laws for a reason, and we need sheriffs like Sherry Honkala, who will in fact use the laws to support the people of this country and not simply the bankers who are trying to get rich off of us. And let's not forget that a large number of the foreclosures in this country are foreclosures of homes where the mortgage is, is, uh, is based on a, an abusive subprime mortgage. And let us not also forget that, in fact, it was single mothers and particularly single mothers of color who were specifically targeted for these abusive mortgages. We need more sheriffs like Sherry. I can't wait to stand there when Sherry is inaugurated as the new sheriff of Philadelphia. <laughs> to give you Sherry Hankala, yes. our next show. I want to thank the local Philadelphia Now chapter as well as the National Organization for Women. Uh, you know, it was uh, quite an interesting experience seeking the local Now's endorsement. Uh, the first time I went, uh, I hadn't gotten all my signatures yet because at, when you're running as an independent, it takes a longer period of time uh, in order for you to get your name on the ballot. So um, uh, I was there at the meeting and uh, I was really excited because I felt like I was going to unanimously get the endorsement right away and the fire alarm went off. <laughs> So, uh, so, you know, certainly I came back and, you know, my, my sisters and now, you know, full-heartedly endorsed me and I'm very excited by that and I'm very honored to have Terry with us from the national office. Um, I want to speak a few minutes, oh, and, you know, my, my sister here, um, uh, who's the head of the Women's Caucus um, for the Green Party as well. And, uh, you know, just to have us all sitting in the room t together right now is r incredibly important because that's what time it is right now in this country, is for all of us to try and figure out how to work together. And I'm not necessarily talking about bipartisanship. I'm talking about we have to begin to vote the person and not the party because our country is falling apart. And every seven seconds now, it used to be 13 seconds, every seven seconds a family's going into foreclosure and this next year, another million families will be thrown out of their homes. And so that's really why it calls for it. a candidate like myself that's willing to stand up to the banks, to work with an incredible team, 
and to refuse to have uh, men, women, and children in the year 2011 thrown out of their homes, and that's what I intend to do. I want to talk a little bit about my situation of running as a woman, as a single mother, um, as a formerly homeless mother for political office. Now, first of all, uh, I told myself as a national anti-poverty leader for the last 25 years that the idea of running for office, you would probably have to throw me in front of a train before I would ever decide to do something like that. And these last few days, I've kind of been revisiting that. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, when they said, you know, I've, you know, I've always heard because, you know, I've been a big women's history buff and have always been into, you know, learning. Uh, I've always studied uh, the history, the history of women in particular. And as I was growing up, um, you know, for me, I, you know, took some women's studies classes in college, and when I was in college, uh, you know, they would just talk, talk mostly about, like, these mainstream middle America women, that kind of stuff, and I was convinced that there was a history of struggle and revolt of poor women, and that um, study led me to learn about, you know, to really look at women during slavery and the things that they had to do in order to keep all of their children together on the plantation and um, you know having to lay down with um, the, their master in order to keep the, the, the children on the plantation, their families together on the plantation to learning about um, you know uh, women suffragettes at, versus you know uh, women that were fighting for the vote and other women, working women that were just fighting to like eat and stay alive and do all of these kinds of things and then you know uh, uh, really looking at you know people like Mother Jones and the march from Kensington where I live and work every day of my life um, that you know it was uh, Mother Jones that walked from Kensington to New York City uh, because the children had had their limbs cut off and if Mother Jones was alive today and walked from Kensington, uh, she would have nothing to walk from because there are no factories anymore that exist. All of them have been closed down and the number one source of income in the area in which I live and work uh, used to be welfare and when the dismantling under a democratic president, um, the social welfare system uh, now the number one source of income is no longer welfare. The number one source of income is drugs. So literally, um, you know, my campaign manager, Jim Moran, let's do a shout out for him. Um, you know, uh, he's a Kenzo. Uh, you know, those of us that, you know, know how to survive that neighborhood um, know that, uh, you know, pretty much every day of my life is like working uh, in an emergency uh, hospital room where I'm always having to triage something. So, uh, you know, my mother has always said I'm a little crazy and I think she's absolutely correct. So why would you, like when you already work in an emergency room, decide to run for political op office? I mean, what kind of, you know, obstacles could I possibly encounter? Well, just to give you a few this week, um, <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, we are busy round the clock. I call it dialing for dollars. Um, I'm spending a great deal of my time right now. <laughs> and, you know, first I have to deal with the obstacle of being a woman and then being a poor woman. And, uh, you know, the first thing that they say that makes a viable candidate is you have to have at least a gajillion dollars in your bank account. Uh, and so... <laughs> Uh, you know, being, you know, a, a poor campaign and a poor mother. Um, now, I'm going to break down how poor uh, lately. How poor are you, Sherry? <laughs> you know, uh, I've, I've been very lucky to be, you know, blessed with, you know, um, a wardrobe. That I will not give up. <laughs> <laughs> That'll come over food. Um, but... Uh, uh, you know, uh, this week, uh, you know, as I was running out of gas, yes, Jonathan, it was Jonathan's car on uh, Second and Lehigh. Um, I figured I was probably the only candidate that's run out of gas um, this week. Uh, 
we just went to pick up a rental car in order for us to get to New York City for an event that's happening for me. And luckily, we were able to borrow $5 from VVAC to put gas in the other car in order to get us there. And uh, that's my pitch where you guys pass around a hat because I just parked in the parking lot in order to get here on time, and you have to pay for it. <laughs> you like that one. Okay. So, needless to say, um, you know, some people think uh, because I do uh, crazy things that you would think that I have some private stash somewhere. A lot of folks are really convinced about it. Uh, but soon, you know, after people have the opportunity to come over and hang out in my mansion, also known as the closet, um, they're able to see that um, I do indeed live the life of the other poor women that I talk about. Uh, and I also come from a family in which uh, uh, my sister, I'm talking incessantly about her because it was one of the personal reasons why I decided to run for office this year is because my sister, after 20 years um, of living in her home, lost her home to foreclosure. And uh, she was one of those victims of uh, predatory lending in which uh, her husband was laid off for a short peri period of time. Uh, they became, began to fall behind in their bills. They took out another loan to catch up. And then uh, her payment ballooned. And uh, Wells Fargo then uh, took her home, stole her house after she had spent all of her, you know, 20 some years working overtime at the hospital as a member of SEIU um, and, uh, you know, lost her house. And so I watched as my nieces, uh, you know, uh, packed up their boxes and cried. Uh, after living in the only home that they'd ever lived in in their whole life. But during that period, the thing that was just as difficult is my sister met seven neighbors, all within like seven or eight blocks of her, that were also all going into foreclosure. And if she hadn't begun to talk to each other about it, um, then uh, they would have never have known that they were having this common experience because when you're in foreclosure, you're just supposed to pack up in the middle of the night and disappear, uh, and that, that fits into a program that's called Cash for Keys. You know, basically, if you, you clean up the house, you get that, you know, 600 to to $1,000 or whatever uh, to make the house look good and not participate in any kind of struggle. And so, uh, you know, she lost the house after 20 years, but then, like many families across the country, the post-traumatic stress disorder, which are caused by the banks, Wells Fargo and Bank of America and the rest of them, um, you know, she began to go into a serious depression. And she's now, you know, preparing for a divorce uh, after being married for 20-some years. And uh, she had to move into... Uh, you know, uh, her brother-in-law's house, and now that they're getting a divorce, she's having to move out. And when you move out with teenagers, you know how many landlords are looking forward to renting to teenagers, right? They're out there, uh, no. <laughs> and so, and not to mention what happens to your credit. Um, so trying to, she's now trying to rent. She finally found a place to rent uh, over on a, you know, a uh, very dangerous section in the Twin Cities. Yes, there's a dangerous section in the Twin Cities. And uh, she's, she's now living there um, and trying to figure out now how to uh, escape homelessness. And this is the cycle that many, many uh, women uh, are having to go through across this entire country. Uh, now, uh, she's just trying to struggle not to figure out how to hold on to her home that she invested her whole life in and painted every room and, you know, did the woodwork on the floors and all of that stuff. Now she's just trying to figure out how to keep that house over her head. Uh, it's time. It's time for those of us that have been told the, that we're the little guy, we're the little mouse, we're the little nothing and that we don't matter to begin to stand up and run for political office. And
and it's not just that you know you know gee that's a good idea and that kind of stuff um, but it's a strategic necessity at this point uh, because uh, you know the only way that um, we've ever freed ourselves from many of the horrendous conditions throughout history is when people that have been most impacted by those issues have been in the forefront and have stood up and demanded that change. Are we really able to make any kind of history? And, you know, that's what I'm going to do. November 8th, we're going to be the first place in the entire country led by a formerly homeless single mother. We're going to stop home foreclosures in Philadelphia. <laughs> And I'm going to hold that as the first woman sheriff in the city of Philadelphia, where you're not supposed to have these non-traditional jobs. Well, uh, it's mine. And uh, I hope all of you will help us in this process. Uh, again, uh, this is not about, uh, you know, a guilt trip about, like, oh, how sad and how hard Sherry's life is in the campaign. This is like, are we serious about power? Um, because the last thing poor women or poor people need in this co country is pity. What we need is political power, and that requires people uh, taking me seriously, because I definitely take myself seriously, and it means digging into your pockets, talking to your friends, giving me names of other people that I can call, setting up house parties, doing whatever you possibly can. So I want to thank you all for coming here tonight. I know that everybody had to, like, jump over eight thousand obstacles in order to make this thing happen tonight, but I'm incredibly thankful and very excited. Um, so, uh, and I particularly want to thank um, the local now, Pennsylvania Now, for endorsing me and for hosting this here tonight. Thank you. Thank you.